Hello, and welcome to another episode of Wednesdays with We. I'm super excited today because we have our first male guest on our Wednesdays with We program. Um, and I will have Diane Sweeney from our communications team introduce uh, Mick to you. But with that, Diane, I'll turn it over to you. And thank you so much for joining us, Mick. Thanks for having us. Thanks. Thanks, Jackie. So I'm really, really happy to introduce Mick Mulka, who leads our entire America sales organization for the channel within TE. And he's a great colleague. And I, I love working with him. And sometimes I, I want to wring his neck. And I think he likes to wring mine, too. So welcome to this. Mick is our first male on the show. So no pressure. Mick, yeah, that's right. <laughs> Well, thank you for having me. I'm honored to be here. All right. Great. Well, real quick, before we get started, Diane, so can you just explain, um, you know, the, the position, what it entails, what Nick's doing, but also before we get into that, like this topic today is going to be really interesting because we've talked about so many different things and we had such an interesting conversation. But the title we ended up coming up with is Creating Awareness in Cultural Diversity. Uh, there's so much to that in this conversation, but I'm excited to talk to Mick about that. But, but before we get started, what, what is your actual position at TE? What does that entail? What do you do? Yeah, so uh, I've actually been in this role uh, just since the beginning of the year. Uh, for TE and I run the uh, uh, America's business for distribution, which is a cross function all TE at uh, uh, and, and so I run the sales team uh, engaged with the distribution network going out and selling our products. Nice. Well, good. So nice to have you on our program. Um, just to kick things off. Um, I just wanted to say that, first of all, I can listen to you. I love your accent. <laughs> nice to have a male on the program and nice to have an accent. So that's really great. Um, and that kicks us into our cultural diversity discussion where we were talking about, you know, Diane has talked very highly of you. And she oh, was mentioning you. that you would be good uh, to have on the program because you have had a couple different times in your career where you've had some pivot points where maybe traditionally you've had um, a lot of diverse thinking, but maybe along the way you've realized other people haven't um, for whatever reason that might be. So anyway, we'll just kick off the discussion and maybe I'll just turn that over to you to tell a couple of things that have happened along the way and what you've learned. Yeah, well, you know, I've had an interesting journey, I think, uh, being born in England and growing up there um, through my early school years and then coming over to the US to uh, to go to college uh, and then graduating college I went to work for actually 20 years for a, a Taiwanese company and so you know just seeing a uh, an extremely uh, male dominated um, uh, industry uh, in a male dominated company from a somewhat of a male dominated culture in, in Taiwan you know a lot of my um, conversations, a lot of the conversations at work were, were typically, uh, as you would say, male dominated. So, um, mm -hmm. you know, and, and as I've, I've worked through what I saw growing up with a, a strong mother, uh, extremely intelligent, but in what my wife has pointed out to me now, she's American, uh, as a somewhat male, you know, chauvinist society that she believes I grew up in. Um, I've struggled with where was it that I, I really um, made that pivot, you know, and, and I think it was a couple of things um, within my career that sort of shaped that. So, you, you had an interesting story that you shared with me about when you were, you were hiring somebody and, and the fact that it was female, you didn't really think of that, but as you brought her on board, the reactions of your colleagues was a little startling to you right well you know it was more during the sort of the interview and hire process and and so um i interviewed for a uh, a sales executive an engineer um to to work with one of our tier one customers and to drive our cable assembly business and um we needed somebody very strong to be able to come in and and, and really penetrate the business and through the interview process this candidate uh, she presented herself as as by far the best candidate 
but I knew I was hiring into a Taiwanese organization. And actually the business lead for uh, that business in Taiwan questioned me on, should I really be hiring mm. a woman to call on a tier one customer to go in and do this? And, and so, you know, through some back and forth, um, you know, I pressed for it pretty hard and we did hire her and she was probably one of the most successful salespeople, you know, we had, uh, and certainly proved, mm. um, you know, to a lot of people, I think that, you know, we shouldn't be holding back or choosing based on anything other than merit to do the job. And you had some feedback that somebody came back to and said, you were right, right? So at least you got yeah, some validation. This, this particular hiring manager, once he started to look at the numbers and saw the success rate, and I mean, we went from, you know, generally, you know, a low percentage of business on, on a, a major tier one computer manufacturer to, you know, through one of their generations of server, we were, you know, 98% capture rate. And, and I've never seen a turnaround like that. So, uh, and, and she was largely the reason for that. So. Wow. Well, that's really interesting to hear too, though, because I think it kind of demonstrates a little bit um, one of the issues of why sometimes women don't advance or don't get hired is because you really had to advocate behind the scenes to even hire her. So you wonder how many times that doesn't happen, right? Yeah, you know, Diane and I talked a little bit about this. It's not always the safe hire uh, or hasn't been in the past for, for a male leader in the business to, you know, hire a woman if she's successful um, you wouldn't typically get any credit for that from, you know, your male colleagues or from you know, your managers. If, if she's not, then the reason she wasn't is because you hired a woman and we told you so, right? So it does take yeah. courage as a, as a leader to hire the right candidate for the job. And, you know, we, we, you know, I know this is, you know, women in engineering, but diversity to me, um, it, it comes in all shapes and sizes. I think hiring the right candidate staying true to your process and having the courage to push back when somebody says, well, maybe not is something that I feel convicted about and something that I've done hopefully within my career, I'll continue to do and, and provide people that opportunity. Right. Right. What have you seen in, you know, when you work with women and some of the strengths that they have that brings maybe a differentiated value, do you have any impressions on, what what we should be proud of instead of maybe holding back or I mean well, you talk about your daughters and, and you know maybe what you've taught them maybe think about it from that perspective I have I have two amazing daughters um one eight soon to be nine next month uh, this month now we're in mm -hmm. June and an 11 year old and and a couple of times they've come home from school and said, well, daddy, I can't do that. Right. And I'm like, well, why? Well, that's what boys do. No, I don't want to hear that. Right. Okay. You should be limited only by your imagination and, and come get daddy yeah. if someone says otherwise. Right. <laughs> but this is the conversations I have yeah. with them. And I think it comes from my wife and she's, she's a teacher, but she's a very strong uh, individual and, and she's tried to impress that upon the girls. What I still see, even at an early age with them, is that they're being defined by, you know, what society thinks they should be. And, and it scares me because mm -hmm. I, I press them the other way. I, I, I don't want to say I treat them like boys, but I'm, I'm the firm, you know, if they fall down and graze the knee, get up, tough it out, right? Just, I try to teach them because I know society won't give them a break, right? So, you know, it's, it's interesting for me when I, um, when I look at those two girls and I try to imagine what they'll be when they grow up and, and the sky's the limit and it should be. Well, I tell you, uh, Diane knows this. Um, I was extremely close with my father. He treated me like I was a boy and I had my family nickname was Jake. <laughs> so that's what my dad <laughs> called me, Jake, my whole life. And so um, he treated me like you could do anything you want to do. Sky's the limit and don't ever let anybody tell you you can't do something because like you, I'm your dad, I'll go kick their butt. <laughs> Yeah. You know, and he empowered me. So the one thing that your girls have going for them is you um, and that you're teaching them all the right things and you are empowering them. And I can tell you, trying. they will never forget it. They'll never forget well, it. <laughs> well, and, and I tell you, just as we're being honest with each other, I can't tell you how many people came to me when I had my second girl and said, well, are you going to keep trying for a boy? Right. Do you want, I was like, no, I've got two. I don't have the energy for three. Right. But it, they were perfect. They were healthy. Yeah. It didn't matter to me. So, 
Well, I just want to, we're, we're coming close to our time here, but I want to hear, I've heard about this Thanksgiving story that I know nothing uh, about, but can you tell uh, us the Thanksgiving story? <laughs> uh, I have to be really careful how I say this in case any of my okay. uh, family, but so, you know, I grew up in England and my wife's from Georgia. Okay. Her family lives in, in uh, Alabama. Um, and this was, you know, in the early years of our relationship before we were married, uh, I was with her family for Thanksgiving and we would always go to her family for Thanksgiving. It was a wonderful time. But I noticed this pattern. It was the second Thanksgiving. I noticed this pattern where the men would all sit and watch, you know, telly. They'd watch football and uh, and the women would all go in the kitchen and make dinner. And then they'd ring the dinner bell and the men would all yeah. storm in the kitchen, grab the plate, go sit down and eat. Right. Yeah. Soon yeah. they were done. They'd get up and go watch football. And yeah. so I think it was the second or third, I forget now, Thanksgiving and I, I looked at my father-in-law as we were sitting at the table. I looked at my father-in-law and my brother-in-law and I said, hey, why don't we go pick up the kitchen after dinner? And I would never forget, um, rest his soul, I'll never forget my father-in-law's face looking at me like I'd stabbed him. <laughs> just, you know, but that was part of the, you know, interestingly, that was probably part of the chauvinist culture I grew up in that said women first and, and men should help, right? And, mm -hmm. and I know that sounds a little bit backward, but it really did shape a little bit of the way I, I brought my mentality to the to the US, I suppose. And I think that's a little bit defined the way I, I feel today and, and how I'll continue to fight for um, the rights of the right candidate, the rights of my employees regardless, and the rights of my two daughters and, and my wife. Mm. That's awesome to hear. I think how that translate into the translates into the business world is Still, when there's typically, say, one of the women in the boardroom of, say, 20 men or so, she's usually the one kind of catering and getting coffee or, you know, trying to help, trying to yeah. get the food together or whatever. It really does translate into the business world because it is a cultural thing. So it's interesting that you brought that up. But um, yeah. anyway, I just wish we had more time to talk to you on a final note um, since we're coming to our time. Any, Diane, any final questions or thoughts? For Mick. I, I guess one thing to Mick that you said to me when we were talking about this is that, you know, advancing diversity and advancing women in leadership, it's a shared responsibility from it's not it's not men that we don't blame it on men. And it's not women, mm -hmm. but we're in this together. And it's, it, it's, it's up to all of us. So I don't know if you have any last comments on that. Mm hmm. Yeah, you know, it's to me, it's it's being aware, and it's that awareness on both sides. I would say, as a um, as anybody of diversity, or as a, and certainly as a woman in business, don't don't allow anyone to tell you no. Don't allow anyone to look at you other than uh, beyond equal. Frankly, as I mentioned to my wife, she should mm -hmm. stop fighting for equality because she's much better than I am. Uh, and I would say. <laughs> I would say to my, my male colleagues and certainly hiring managers, just have courage. Have courage to do the yeah. right thing and hire the right person regardless of the situation yeah. and stand by that, right? You, you empower the person to be successful, give them the opportunity and then stand back. And, and frankly, in my career, I've seen reap the benefits, right? If you hire the right people, you know, you're going to be successful. Wow. Well, that's such a good message. And I just wanted to thank you uh, for your courage and tell you that, you know, thank you for being one of those gentlemen who is very professional and diverse men, uh, minded and really advocating for women in times that you have needed to. So appreciate that and uh, hope that so many people hear this message. And um, anyway, kudos to your wife as well. Sounds like she's been a great mentor in your life. And yes. I just have this vision of you with your accent and her with hers. I'd love to see you guys <laughs> side by side sometime. <laughs> well, anyway, well we'll be you. able to translate for each other. Trust me. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, uh, have thank a great you. day. Yeah, thank, thank you. you so I really much. enjoyed it. And um, thank you. Thank you, man. Okay, thank you for, thanks for being here. All right. Okay, bye-bye.